Cisco's Firepower Next Generation Firewall differs from the ASA uh, a little bit. Let's talk about what we're doing differently. Uh, when we take a look at Firepower, uh, opposed to the ASA, it can be a little bit blurry. Um, let's use this bottom box to represent what the ASA was doing, which was basically handling traffic from the layer three, layer four perspective. So think about access list, NATing, IP address, security levels, uh, VPNs, all that type of stuff. And then when we identify certain traffic flows, we could use uh, that modular policy framework, MPF, which consists of class maps to identify traffic flows and then policy maps to take action on them. And that's how we would perform, sometimes abbreviated as application visibility and control. A lot of times what many of us just call deep packet inspection, actually going into the contents of the payload and making decisions based on things that we find at the application layer. Um, historically, that was all handled by Cisco Intelligence, so they were responsible for creating the kind of like the logical knobs that we would turn to take control of different traffic policies. Um, I really liked using modular policy framework, um, but the inspection class maps where you were uh, defining characteristics of applications at layer seven was pretty cumbersome for a lot of users. If you weren't really enthusiastic about regular expressions and the nuances of you know, traffic management, I suppose, uh, it could be a bit intimidating. So what we see with Firepower is we split this firewall in half and we've got the traditional ASA code uh, running at the bottom and then we've got our Firepower uh, solutions basically over here at the top. Once upon a time, this was handled by a virtual machine and it was basically uh, two different systems running on one physical piece of hardware. Kind of like you can have a server, maybe it's running Hyper-V and I put a Linux VM inside of it. And they can talk back and forth using uh, virtual networking, right? Uh, that said, you still had two separate operating system stacks talking to each other. What we've done in recent versions of code is moved over to what we call a unified model. So there's your single Linux kernel under the hood. Uh, and then on top of that, we've got what we call the Lina architecture, which is responsible for that layer three, four connectivity. And then we've got uh, all of our source fire intelligence that comes from like the store inspection engine that's kind of running up top. So as we go through, and we describe the different traffic flows. You'll see how this works in more detail. You'll see how we grab those traffic flows and enable our threat intelligence for those particular feeds. Um, just kind of coming back to a very high level, looking at Firepower, it's gonna be a, di a bit different from what we've done in the past. Uh, you may be used to running ASDM uh, right off of your ASA to do management. What we're gonna have here is the Firepower appliance itself, and then we've got a management center called FMC uh, that runs off to the side. You don't have to do this. You could use Firepower Threat Defense, FTD, uh, hosted directly on the firewall. Uh, and there's also a cloud solution as well. Um, but most people uh, that, that I've come across, most students in the classes are running FMC, and they use FMC to manage the firewall. So all the events, all the discovery data, all the statistics and alerts are all being generated and sent to FMC. As an administrator, you or I would log into FMC using our browser, we'd build our configuration, and then that configuration, once we apply it, would be pushed out to the Firepower device. So when we look at doing a Firepower deployment, realize that very similar to the ASA, that we support, support both routed and transparent mode. Uh, optionally, you can configure intrusion detection as well as intrusion prevention. Remember, when we talk about IDS, this is typically on the sidelines. So maybe this is my sensor right here, Firepower Appliance with the interface, it's basically just a passive tap. Uh, what we'll do is we'll hook up to a switch, we'll set up a span session, and then this switch is sending a copy of every packet that's being transferred here to my web server. So this would be like our span interface where this is our source, where we're doing observation of the traffic, and this is our span destination. So on this particular switch, we set up a span port, we can copy all the traffic coming from the internet into that web server. And if we see anything that's hostile, the IDS sees it, and then what? We tend to say that it can tell you about the attack, but it doesn't do anything to stop it. It doesn't work with your network. It's not entirely true. Um, using IDS, we can sometimes talk to external devices, perimeter devices, and set up dynamic blocking after the fact. But the real thing you want to appreciate is that you're not inline. So while you could potentially use other constructs to react to network attacks and maybe set up some dynamic blocking as the attack is occurring in an automated fashion, we still don't have the ability to drop the offensive packet 
and prevent it from hitting the server. In order to do this, we use intrusion prevention. IPS means it's inline. So again, same uh, components. There's the internet. Here's our switch that the traffic is passing through. Now what we do is we put our sensor right here. So traffic has to flow through the sensor to get to the web server. If this is the case, we've got the ability to drop in line, so the offensive packet never hits the web server. That's the difference between IPS and IDS, is really just the, um, the mode of passing traffic, but under the hood, the intelligence, the signatures are all very similar. So when we take a look at next generation firewall working in routed mode, I think this is what most of you are most likely used to when working with firewalls. We've got two different interfaces, maybe a, a third dedicated for management. Uh, of those two interfaces, each hosts IP addresses which are in different subnets. So we're actually routing from one interface to another, just separate layer three domains, right? Very similar if you're using a firewall to protect your internal network from the public internet. Now, an alternative that I've used, and this can be really handy for niche situations, is using what we call transparent mode or stealth mode. We talked about this uh, briefly in the ASA section, and this is very much uh, a very similar approach. We can create a bridge group between these two interfaces. Instead of routing between them, we switch between them. So this firewall has just become like, let's say that, imagine that it only had two ports, and it'll have more, and of course we can bundle those together for um, logical, uh, logical and physical resiliency. But when we've got these two interfaces of inside and outside, we typically assume they're on different networks. Well, what if we wanted to drop this, as they call it, a bump in the wire? And that just says, deploy the firewall in transparent mode, uh, we can drop it into an existing infrastructure without changing any of the IP addressing, and we still have the ability to uh, basically forward traffic at layer two. We've got layer two forwarding, but we've got layer seven intelligence in terms of the ability to dig into the packet, perform you know, decryption, look at the guts of what's really happening, and make intelligence decisions. Uh, here you see the next generation firewall deployed uh, with the IPS service enabled. We'll talk about how to select traffic flows that require IPS inspection, but the way that would basically work is traffic is flowing from one interface to the other, let's say outside to the inside. We can say certain traffic coming from the outside to certain systems on the inside should be handed off to Snort to do some deeper inspection. Or maybe we want to take a look at files that are process, uh, being passed back and forth. Or maybe we want to do some DLP. We want to do something intelligent. IPS just means that we're simply doing this in line. And here, along with our other firewall services. Uh, here you see an example of deploying next generation firewall in passive mode. Notice that the physical interface has been sent to passive, which basically means that we're attached to a LAN tap. Traffic is being transferred to us. Um, but this particular interface is just sitting here listening and watching. Alternatively, uh, you can create an inline set, and an inline set allows us to deploy uh, an IDS as though it's an inline tap, and we can also do uh, IPS in a very similar manner. Whenever you deploy the next generation firewall, historically we've always thought of firewalls being at the edge, right? It protects the internet from us, and this is kind of our barrier. Well, as you dig deeper inside of environments, you'll see that you can add firewall line cards to chassis-based switches. We've also got some firepower appliances that have got extremely, extremely high throughput. We start looking at you know, 10 gig interfaces and the ability to cluster multiple firewalls together. So what that means is we can actually leverage firewalls between different departments. If I want to make sure that you know, anything coming from the developers into the accounting department is going to be screened and sanitized, this is going to have the throughput to do it. So maybe you've only got one gig links on your edge and you go, oh, I would never need a firewall with a 10 gig interface. That's crazy. Well, maybe if you deploy it within the data center, maybe if you deploy it uh, within your core, you would need those levels of performance. And of course, via clustering, we can actually scale to that level now. So a pair of identical firepower threat defense devices can be configured for failover, very similar to what we saw with the ASA. You have a pair that's configured for the term failover, and this is where we have an active and standby state. Failover is to be contrasted with what we call uh, clustering. Remember with clustering, we can take more than two devices, group them together, you've got a single management point, 
But when we take a look at traffic load, we've got the ability to scale to multiple devices. So very similar to what we saw with the ASA, we also have uh, that same clustering capability uh, under the Firepower solution. One thing that's a little bit different, remember when we did Cisco's, Fire, uh, Cisco's ASA high availability, we had this concept of active-active. And that's based on having contexts, which are kind of like virtual firewalls, that are placed into groups that are made active on different physical devices. So here's physical device one on the left, physical device two on the right. If I had 10 contexts, one through five runs here, six through 10 runs here, and we basically do bi-directional state table replication. So that way if one of our firewalls goes down or we have to perform a software update, um, all of our contacts will go from running on one device to the other. The way that those contacts work is you basically have a context that runs on top of the ASA code, which runs on top of your actual hardware. What they've moved to with Firepower is this concept of instances. So imagine that you've got a virtual machine that's deployed on whatever you're using as a hypervisor. If I click that virtual machine and I duplicate it and I create a new instantiation, it's still running on the same physical box but its resources are not being directly managed by that other system. See, when I've got multiple contexts here, they're all competing for resources on the same device. That ASA has got one CPU, it's got memory, it's gonna hit some contention. What we do in terms of instances are just deploy multiple virtual firewalls. The firewalls don't have that concept of context, but we can still do cooler things in terms of low distribution and high availability we're gonna leverage the underlying power of our hypervisor. Let's say that it's uh, VMware, right? Um, that's gonna give us greater performance than what we would have gotten away with was simply uh, partitioning up a single ASA firewall and counting on it to handle all the, uh, the resource utilization and all the, the conflicts that the ASA would be responsible for.